Well, folks, here I am sitting here on the couch. And, you know, one of the hardest things for me to do is the introduction to a video. What do you start with? Well, it's late at night. It's Sunday night, and I took a late nap. When I got through, I said I was a little bit hungry. I thought I'd go to the kitchen get me a bite of something to eat. So I came back with my vanilla wafers and some cookie butter. Don't know if you've ever tried this or not, but it's good stuff and it's terrific if you're feeding it to your kids. They'll like it. Nice little treat. So that's what I was eating and I got to thinking about the trip uh, that Jan and I took last weekend to my sister's in Western Kentucky. Here I go to, with my nose. I have a bad habit of doing that, you know. Just overlook me. Keep in mind, I just got up from a nap, didn't comb my hair, didn't put any makeup on. I'm wearing the glasses because my eyes look better with them than they do without them. So you just get used to seeing me with the glasses. That's to hide things. Got on the same blouse I wore for the last video, but it happened to be one of those comfortable blouses that feels good and you reach for it every time. So here I am, you get to watch me wear my same old clothes. Anyhow, let's get to the story. Before we left my sister's house, she had Jan a doggy bag. Here, you might get hungry on the way home. It's a four-hour drive. We just had breakfast. Well, most unlikely, we were not going to stop anywhere for something to eat. So, she had Jan the doggy bag, and Jan says, Thank you, Inez. And she said, What do you mean? She said, Well, when I was a kid, and we'd go home to visit Mamma, and Inez lived across the street from Mamma. And when we got ready to go back home, she would always have a little brown bag for me and Greg, her brother. And uh, this is in case you get stranded on the road going home. They always worried about me getting stranded. And then she would hand me, uh, hand me a dollar bill, and she didn't have a dollar, she handed me a five dollar bill, and she said, now this is in case you get stranded and you need to call back home for somebody to come get you. And I would say, Inez, those telephone booths along the highway don't take dollar bills. And she just kind of grinned, well, you take the money, you might need it anyway. And of course the kids were tickled to get their little doggy bag because she always picked them biscuits and jelly and jam. And sometimes there'd be a little piece of ham on the biscuit. That was their, their uh, emergency uh, bag. So here was Jan uh, Jeanette handing Jan the doggy bag in case we got stranded on the highway. Now, we're driving along and I open up the back of Jan driving and here's what she had. Vanilla wafers, package of cheese crackers, two packages of peanut butter crackers, whole big package of these little Twix candy bars and two ham sandwiches. Now, Jan had her big cup of water and I had my thermos that I always keep filled with Dr. Pepper. So we were prepared in case we got stuck on the highway. Now, this has nothing to do with the story I'm going to tell, but it since I was sitting here eating vanilla wafers, I thought I'd tell you that. 
I'm going to talk about Mama. I can tell a lot of stories about Mama. Having grown up on a big farm, now we're talking about over a hundred years ago. <laughs> That's a long time ago. Mama was raised on a big farm. She knew all there was to know about uh, crops. She knew all of the astrological signs. She had her own home remedies. She never forgot any of the old home remedies. You didn't go to the doctor. Mama pulled out one of her home remedies from her medicine cabinet. You know that little cabinet in your bathroom that has a mirror on the front? I don't know what you call it today, but when I was growing up, it was called the medicine cabinet, and it actually held all of the Band-Aid, the Mercurochrome, the uh, Vicsag, Castrol, it didn't matter what it was, but all of the medicine was in there. And the one mama kept hidden in the kitchen cabinet, in the back of the kitchen cabinet, was her bottle of whiskey. Now, it was only had about two ounces of whiskey in it, but this was in case you had toothache or I don't know what you used whiskey for, for uh, as a medicine, but mama knew how to use it. But she kept it in the back cabinet where nobody could see it, you know, that a no-no. So, um, I was about 13, 14 years old. You know, that was the time of life where a girl's life changes. You start having your monthly periods. There were rules about that too. You never washed your hair while you were having your monthly period. We washed our hair every Saturday night and rolled it, got it fixed so it'd be pretty on Sunday morning. And if we were having our period, we just didn't let Mama know it. We went ahead and washed our hair. I don't know what was supposed to happen to you if you washed your hair while you were having a period, but obviously it never happened to me. So, it was summertime, and a group at church, we were going on a picnic. It was, we were going to Laurel River. It was a three-mile walk, and when you got there, the, everybody went to Laurel River when they wanted to picnic, socialize, have fun, because they could swim in the river. And back in those days, they had what was called the Three Sisters. Now, the Three Sisters were three huge, huge rocks that you could climb up on, just like climbing a hill almost. You climb on top of those rocks and you could dive off those rocks into the river. Well, I, I never had any problem with that because I couldn't swim anyway. But that was one of the activities that the kids loved to take part in. It was climbing the Three Sisters. Now there were picnic areas We'd carried our picnic baskets. Everybody had uh, brought snacks and sandwiches, and we were going to have hot dogs and hamburgers, the usual picnic. And we had our quilt that we would spread out so that we'd put all our food on the quilt. Well, we had been eating, and I was still on the quilt eating my uh, hot dog. And a few of the kids had gotten off to one side and they were having a little softball game. Well, my friend Ruth, she's a tall girl, very athletic, she was up to bat. And they threw the softball. She hit it, she smacked it so hard. And by chance, that softball hit me in the back of the head right behind my ear, very dangerous spot. I went out like a light, but I came right back. Well, everybody and the teacher, of course, was very concerned about me and 
and I kept brushing it off, you know, so oh, I'm okay, I'm okay. But the knot started to build up and it was half the size of that softball. But I had long hair, you couldn't see it. Nobody would notice it and I wouldn't tell the teacher. But it hurt so bad I couldn't turn my head back and forth. I couldn't climb the three sisters because it meant too much movement of my head and it was painful, but I wouldn't say a word. And of course, when the picnic was over, we had the three mile walk back home. And I wouldn't tell anybody about the big knot on the back of my head till I got home. When I got home, my two sisters, two older sisters were there and I told them what happened, how I'd been hit in the head with the softball. And I said, please, don't tell mama, cause she warned me. She was, uh, anything she didn't want us to do, she would always, something might happen. Who knows what might happen? Maybe it would, maybe it wouldn't. But that was her way of trying to keep us from going on picnic or wherever it was we wanted to go. So there I was, yeah, Mama had already said something will happen because she was worried about me having my period and, and thinking it might affect me if with that long walk to the river. So I didn't tell her and I said, girls, please don't tell Mama. Don't let Mama know I, I got hit in the head with a softball. Oh no, they wouldn't, they wouldn't. So that night I went to bed and I was sound asleep. I woke up all of a sudden and Mama was sitting on the side of my bed. She had the big salve, that smelly stuff that smelled up the whole house and you had to hold your nose. She used it for a cure for everything, I think. And she had a cotton flannel, piece of cotton flannel. She had heated it on the stove in the kitchen. And she had pulled my pajamas open. And she was rubbing big sabes all over my chest, up my neck, the back of my neck. And when she saw I was awake, she said, you know, you could have been killed when that ball hit you in the head because that's the most dangerous spot on your head. Well, I couldn't argue with that, but that was the way mama was. She, she was always there with her home remedies. We had to take uh, castor oil, all kids. I think before kids started in school, they, they got lined up and mamas gave them their dose of castor oil, the worst tasting stuff you ever put in your mouth. Mama had a remedy for everything. You could smell the onions and the sugar on the stove that she would be boiling to. I don't know what she used it for, poultice or something, for some kind of cure. She had a cure for your earache, sore throat, chest congestion. Uh, if you had a wound, she was always wrapping it. I remember one time I'd been swinging on one of those old tire swing, oh, that big, big high limb on the tree and the rope came way down and was wrapped around the big truck tire. They used those big truck tires and we'd crawl in those and we could swing back and forth. And of course, when you stopped, you had to drag your feet to stop. And we always were barefooted. And I remember hobbling home my feet were filthy dirty, but somehow or other, when I was stopping the swing, my foot drug across a piece of glass and cut the end of my big toe. It was just hanging. 
and I went hobbling down the street. It was such a nasty cut, but Mama was right there with her home remedies. She cleaned and she patched and she wrapped it good and it, it healed just fine. But we never went to the doctor for anything. She took care of everything. Only time anybody went to the doctor was when, well, one sister had to go to the hospital for appendectomy. Another one had broken her arm while she was skating, right, right smack dab across the middle. She came staggering home, carrying her roller skates in the other hand. And uh, there was that broken arm. So she had to go to the hospital for that. But then there was Inez when she was seven years old. She was held back in the first grade because she was sick so much. And by being held back one year, that put her in the same class with my next sister, Ada. So they grew up going to school in the same class and they graduated together. But Inez was talking about something she was looking at out the window. She was homesick and she was seeing something double and talking about it. Mama realized Something's wrong with this child. She, she's not seeing right. So she called the doctor. Old Doc Terrell came to the house. And he uh, said, this child's tonsils are swollen so big. She is going to have to have a tonsillectomy. So he said to Mama, have you got a good light in the kitchen? And Mama pointed up to the ceiling, to the light. In those days, the light was on the ceiling. You had a big, long cord that you pulled the cord and that turned the light on. That was the big light in the kitchen. So the next day, he said, I'll be back. I'll be bringing Nurse with me, and I'll remove Inez's tonsils seven years old, she laid on the kitchen table and had her tonsils removed. And my daddy stood beside Dr. Terrell to assist him, but he also had the nurse there too. And he was there. I never thought of my dad as doing something like that, but it was him instead of mama standing there to assist Dr. Terrell while he removed my sister's tonsils. That's the way life was back in those days. And anything you needed, medicinal, mama had it, or she knew how to do it. Anything that had to do with food, vegetables, fruits, she knew how to plant them, when to plant them, when to harvest the crops. She herself had an education in agriculture, farming, medicine, that she didn't learn in school. And all of the neighbors came to her when they had problems. So that's just a little story about my mother and about medicines and Vic Saib. We hated Vic Saib because she would rub it on our necks, on the back of our neck, and she would rub it across our chest, and it was a sticky old stuff, and so all you could do is just stand the smell of it. But it didn't bother her because she was so used to using it. She used it for everything. It, it, it was the main home remedy. So if you wanted to know anything about medicine, you came to my mother. She told you, you need to know anything about cooking? She could tell you. You wanted to know about farming? She knew. Yeah. 
Mama went to the sixth grade in school. But she had an education of her own that couldn't be, couldn't be matched. She's been gone a long time now. Lived to be a hundred and one and a half. She was as alert then as I am now. In fact, I think she was more alert because she could remember so many things. I remember promising when, when she was in the nursing home, of course, I was the only one working and I had to travel 70 miles on the weekend to sit with her and then on my way home. And I promised to bring her, I always brought her something to eat that I would cook just before I left home so that she didn't have to eat the nursing home food all the time. And I knew what she liked and what she could eat. And I'd bring her something every weekend. And if I promised her something, I'd better bring it because the minute I walked in the door, if I promised her a pint of ice cream, first thing she said was, where's my ice cream? She didn't forget anything. 101. So, you're going to hear more stories about Mama. Uh, she was an interesting woman. She was a pretty lady. And she suffered many agonies over loss of children. And those are stories in themselves. And I, I hesitate to tell those stories because I don't like to tell the sad things. But occasionally, you've got to tell a sad thing because they're a part of your life. They're part of living, dying, and leaving memories for others. And I've got lots of memories. And I'm going to tell you more of them. So I wish I had my pictures here of my mother. Uh, she was a pretty lady. She had jet black hair. Her hair didn't start to turn uh, gray until she was about 90 years old. That, look at me, look at me. I've been like this for 10 years. But she still had black, pretty hair. Oh, I'm bragging about her, of course I am. But you know what I'm talking about you'd be saying the same things about your own mother. So that's my story for today. And one thing I don't keep in my house is Vic Save. I grew up with it, hated it. And my sisters were just like me. We hated the Vic Save because mommy used it a lot. And when I get to reading about it, it praised a lot for being a home remedy. So, folks, if you want the cure-all, you go out and buy a little jar of uh, Vicks Vapor Rub. That's what they call it. So, it's midnight now. I had my nap. I had my snack. Now, I'm going to see if I can get sleepy enough to go hop in bed. I'll talk to you later. And thank you for your comments on my last video. You're very nice. You're very sweet. And I appreciate you. Good night.